I'm Daphne Richards. Our question this week is, can I use old shower curtains to solarize my yard? And the answer is yes. Solarizing is a great way to deal with nematodes, weeds, and even get rid of turf grass. You simply cover an area with plastic, weight it down so that it doesn't blow away, and let the heat of the sun bake the area underneath. Nematodes are parasitic roundworms that live in the soil and invade the roots of your plants. Once you have them, you can never truly be rid of them, but solarizing the soil does knock back the population pretty significantly. After replanting in a solarized area, the nematodes will bounce back. So solarization is really most effective in vegetable beds where you can solarize the soil between planting seasons. To best keep the nematodes in check, you should solarize at least once a year for at least a month or longer if you have a really bad infestation in early spring. Clear plastic works best here since the sun shines through the soil and creates even more heat under the plastic due to the greenhouse effect. Solarizing also works well when trying to get rid of weeds and turf grass. For example, if you're trying to remove the grass in order to put in a planting bed or other landscape element. In this situation, it might be better to use black plastic so that you can cut the plants off from the sunlight, forcing them to use all of their stored carbohydrates to grow, but leaving them no way to photosynthesize and produce food to replenish the energy that they're using. Solarizing works very well on plants with underground storage organs like bulbs, rhizomes, and stolons that are very difficult to get rid of by pulling them or even with herbicides. If you're trying to get rid of pernicious weeds like nut sedge or nut grass as it's more commonly called, or Bermuda grass, solarizing multiple times will be necessary. In honor of Native Plant Week, our pick this week is Damianita, Chrysactinia mexicana. This cute little mounding plant is what we in the biz would call a subshrub. With its vibrant forest green leaves and its yellow flowers, Damianita seems almost like a plant out of a fairy tale. Maybe something that Hansel and Gretel might pass on their way to the gingerbread house. It makes a striking addition to any garden bed, but looks best planted against starkingly contrasting colors. It's evergreen, but it does require some shearing to keep it from getting too straggly in the heat. The foliage is strongly aromatic, but the plant stays so low to the ground that you may only be able to detect its scent after a rain. Damianita will only get about 12 inches tall, but it may spread up to 2 feet. It loves the full sun and will not tolerate shade. It thrives in the heat and needs very little supplemental irrigation except during the hottest, longest dry spells. Damianita is native to areas with poor soil that are rocky, so it won't do well in heavy clay or in areas that have been amended with organic matter. It flowers from spring all the way through fall and is listed as hardy to zero degrees. So it will also survive any uncharacteristically cold winters that we might get here in central Texas. This week in your garden, plant some ornamental kale or cabbage, or maybe some pansies and sweet peas. These plants thrive in our mild winters and will bring a bit of cheer to those gray days ahead. You could also plant dianthus, nasturtium, larkspur, and stock. We'd love to hear from you, so please, Visit klru.org ctg to send us your questions or plants of the week from your garden.